Hey audio fam, CJ here with Prodigy Creations. Today we're gonna take a look at the newest plugin by Waves called the Abbey Road RS124 Compressor. This was a total surprise release from Waves and I couldn't be more thrilled about it. A little background behind the compressor, it is modeled after a very rare analog tube compressor that first came about in the late 50s and then became a very widely used compressor at Abbey Road Studios during the 60s. In fact, Waves themselves claims that the original RS-124 compressors were used on every single Beatles song that was ever recorded at Abbey Road Studios. So definitely some very rich history behind this compressor. And the thing that makes it even cooler is the fact that allegedly there were only 25 manufactured and most of them have stayed in Abbey Road Studios where they're still being used. So. What a gift we've been given in the year 2020, you know, when we needed it the most. A huge thank you to Waves and Abbey Road for this gem of a plugin. I'm gonna be doing an overview of this compressor today, but if at any point you would like to check out the Abbey Road RS-124 for yourself, I have provided a direct link to the plugin in the description of this video. Feel free to click on that at any time. So today I'm working with a punk rock track. I'll give you a little preview of it. In this session, I decided to use the Abbey Road compressor on my bass DI track, just kind of randomly to see what the compressor could do. I'd just gotten it and I'd never used it before, so I just kind of slapped it on uh, the bass randomly. But it actually ended up being a very happy accident because I love how the RS-124 sounds on bass. So I'll give you a preview of the full track first, then we'll go into solo mode with the bass DI channel and see what the compressor is adding to it. Okay, now I'm gonna solo the bass DI channel and I'll give you an A-B comparison with the RS-124 on the bass. There you have it, such a nice creamy bass tone with this compressor. I immediately fell in love with the RS-124 after getting that tone. And this plugin is a shining example that some compressors are more than just mere compressors, right? Some are used to add character. And that is definitely what this one is. It seems to add a very nice polish to the high end, but also it seems to retain the low end pretty well. The possibilities as to what you can use this compressor on is only limited by your imagination because you really can use this on whatever you want. In the product description of the RS-124, Waves gives a few examples of different engineers and how they used it. I've got the web page pulled up here. So down here it says, favored by Jeff Emmerich for punchy bass sounds, as we just heard, by Ken Scott for lush guitar treatment, Norman Smith for lightly gluing the entire rhythm section, uh, RS-124 was also a popular choice for mastering in Abbey Road Studios. Down here as well, it says Grammy-winning engineer Tony Maserati uh, uses RS-124s on his vocals like he did with Beyonce, Beyonce and Alicia Keys. So definitely feel free to experiment with the RS-124 to see what you like to use it on. But for now, we'll stick with bass and I'll go over the basics of this plugin. First feature I wanna highlight is this expand button. Click on it and you'll be given more adjustments. First knob here is a high pass filter. This will roll off as much low end as you want on the signal. Wouldn't really use this a ton on bass since we rely on the low end of it. But this could definitely be a good feature for your vocal tracks to get rid of some of the muddiness if there is any. Right next to it, you have a mix knob. This is here in case you do want to use the compressor, 
but you don't want it to completely take over the track you have on it. So this will help you to blend your original signal, in other words, what you heard before the compressor, alongside the signal you are getting out of the compressor. So by default, it's at 100, meaning it's completely taking over. But if you did want to bring back in some of the original signal, you can just dial it back however much you want. So, so there's that section. Onto the input control. This is the only way you are able to adjust how much compression is happening. It's a vintage style compressor, so a lot of uh, so a lot of modern features are missing, like attack ratio and threshold. But that's a good thing, I think, because it makes you spend less time on setting it. So first thing you want to do is make sure your meter section is on GR, meaning gain reduction, and that will show you how much volume is being compressed with the RS-124. Then you just go to your input control, and when you play it back, you just adjust this to your liking. Usually I don't tend to compress too much. I'll normally compress like maybe 5 dB at the most. But with this particular compressor, it seems to really add more when you compress more. Not really sure how that works, kind of an oxymoron, but by golly does it do it. So this is where I've got it hitting on the bass. Very aggressive compression as you can see, but yet this compressor is so smooth sounding that it really doesn't even seem like it's compressing it that much. This compressor is very fascinating. So I've got it dialed into eight. That's where I liked it on this particular track. But if I did want to do more or less, I can simply do that by turning the input control either way. You also do have an input meter display that I can switch to right here in case you want to see how hot it's going into the compressor. This is what it looks like for me. Man, perfect. It like went as far as it could without hitting the red light. So that is like a perfect setting. If it is a little too hot, like I said, this red light up here, uh, it will light up just letting you know it's a little bit too hot. But look, is that a bad thing? It could be, but if it sounds good and the red light's going on, at the end of the day, who really cares, you know? <laughs> Whatever sounds good, do it. But if you do want to do more subtle compression and you don't want to push things too hot and that red light comes on, all you have to do, click on it, it will reset so that it will look like this. And then you can dial back your input control as much as you want. Then when you play it back, uh, if there's no red light this time, you should be good. And then last but not least, you also have an output meter display, which will show you how much volume is coming out of the RS-124. Ideally, you want your input level and your output level to stay the same. So, you know, as you're listening back, you can switch back and forth between the input and the output meters. And if you need to adjust your output level to match the input, you can do so here with this output attenuator. So let's do a live example of that. Start with input and compare it to output. So as you can see how I have it set up here, the output definitely is consistently louder than the input. Um, but you know, to me, they were close enough in the meter that it wasn't a big deal to me. I don't worry too much about getting the signal exactly perfect to how it was before the compressor. My philosophy is that it's always better to gain a little bit of volume from a compressor than to lose volume. So if it's going a little bit louder, it's it's not a big deal to me personally. However, I did uh, turn down the output a little bit about uh, two decibels, as you can see down there. So if you need to turn down the output a little bit to match the input, you can do it right here. You're also technically getting two RS-124 compressors for the price of one with this plugin. With this unit type section down here, you have two different compressor types, the Studio and the Cutter. 
Studio is going to have a faster attack and release time, which will result in a more aggressive sound. Cutter will have a slower attack and release time, which will result in more smooth compression, which is so far what I'm really liking. But let's hear them both in action. Okay, and moving on to the Super Fuse option. This is a feature that will match up the attack and release times together, which seems to really fatten up this bass a lot, so I really enjoyed it for that. We'll do another A-B comparison. When you do have Superfuse on like I do here, it does disable the recovery knob, which is also adjusting your release time, or in other words, how quickly the compressor will reset after it clamps down on the audio. So if we think of it in terms of the gain reduction meter, how quickly this needle is gonna go back to zero after it compresses. To me, it seems that the Superfuse option is the way to get the absolute fastest release time, so if you're looking for a super quick release time, Superfuse is the way to go. But if we do disengage Superfuse, we can use the recovery knob to find a particular release time if we want to do it that way. So one being the fastest release time on recovery mode, and then six being the slowest. So let's see the range on that. Super slow release. So the fastest release, decent, but take a look at the super fuse. Super quick release time. I like that a lot. And the final thing I want to highlight today is this auto hold button. I think Waves explains it best in their manual. This is what they say. When auto hold is engaged, the compressor will analyze the envelope of the transient and smooth the attack. Let's just A, B it and see what it does. I'll start with it off and then I'll bring it in. Personally, I don't really care for that feature. It seems to take away from the essence of the RS-124, you know, at least on the bass. Uh, maybe it would be more suited for vocals or something like that. But there you have it, friends. This is the Abbey Road RS-124 compressor in a nutshell. I am such a huge fan of this plugin. I mean, Waves has been absolutely crushing it lately with their new plugin releases. They also released uh, the CLA Epic plugin around the same time, which I also made a video about. If you're interested in learning more about that one, I will throw a card in this video that will lead you to my CLA Epic review video. And again, just a reminder, I do have a link that will lead you directly to the Abbey Road RS-124 compressor in the description of this video. You can read in more detail about it on the webpage or in the user manual. But also, if you're interested in purchasing it already, you would be doing me a huge favor by purchasing through that link. It's an affiliate link that is traced back to me, and simply by purchasing through it, you will be supporting this channel in a big way, and you will allow me to continue to create free content for you. Thank you to everyone willing to do that for me. Thank you to everyone who watched this video today. Your time is very valuable, and uh, I just thank you for joining me in this video. Give it a like if you found it helpful. Leave a comment if you have any questions. And if you wanna be a part of my audio fam, all you gotta do, hit that subscribe button and we'll hang out more often. Thank you friends, this is CJ with Prodigy Creations. I'll see you in the next one.